That's your Dad's Geek back here on Seth Speaks. Each one is a star, each one is a master. It's the three people who are making their probably debut in disaster. Still got it. Yeah. 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 Terrible fiction. Um, okay, so I have the, th but not, I have the three ensemble people making their Broadway debut. There's still one more person, Lucreta, Nicole, but she is, uh, she plays Lavora Verona, which is the bigger role, so I thought I'd bring her on for her own special segment, but I'm going to have these three clowns in two segments. So I have Travis Kent, right? Is that your last name? Okay, good. Yeah. I just knew he was Travis. I have Maggie McDowell, which is also marriage, which is Maggie McDowell, hype and stallings. And I have Olivia Phillip, where she calls herself Olivia, because, um... <laughs> She auditioned and she was just like sang normally and she's like, do you want another song? And well, actually, no, she didn't say that. She sang normally, but like, hey, that was great. She's like, thank you so much. I'm like, what the hell? She's British and she's doing our job. So um, I have Olivia Phillips, who's British, Travis, and Maggie. So I'll tell the story about each person. So let's start with Maggie. So Magala, Maggie is in the show. She understudies Carrie Butler, who plays Marianne the Feminist. And then I think you also understudy The Nun? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, check your contract. Okay. I think it's like Carrie, the nun, and maybe even Lavora. Cool. Okay, you know what, what happens is when you previews, everyone is just focused on what they're doing under the guise that no one's going to miss a show. And by the way, almost every single person I know in a Broadway show says somebody missed during previews and someone had to go on and it was a nightmare. So by the way, <laughs> check your contract. Okay, um, so Maggie was first in the audition for the off Broadway production and I remember she came in, she was hilarious. Jack was like, you're like Carol Burnett. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And she had this, and then, when, what was the callback story? What, did we call you back the last minute or something? What happened? Well, I remember I was, I had a final callback on a Monday, and then Tuesday I was at, up on the Upper West Side picking up the girls I was babysitting for, and my- you were like a, kind of a full-time nanny, weren't yeah. you? Yeah, and so I was, I was standing in front of the school waiting for them to get dismissed, and my agent called me, and they said, so the people at Disaster want to see you one more time, and I was like, Oh my goodness, I'm babysitting, what, what do I do? But you could tell it was like a call that like, if you didn't go, like, you know, you, mm -hmm. you wouldn't get it. So I called the mom and I said, hey, do you mind if the girls, if we go on a little field trip to Midtown? And the mom was like, Sure, and she didn't mind Did at you all. Did you for what? To a porn I theater? said, no, I said, <laughs> <laughs> I said, I've got this final callback that I just found out about, and like, I, you know, I'd really love to go, and they can come into the theater with me. And she was more worried that, um, the mom was amazing, she was more worried that I wouldn't get the part because of her daughter, instead of like, oh, so nice. and so I brought in this little um, eight-year-old into my final callback, and she sat in the audience with y'all. I remember, um, she was adorable. She was so cute, and I remember Jack swearing at one point and then immediately being like oh I'm so sorry I'm so sorry I mean, he still, we have a child in the cast he still pulls that pretend routine he'll say a horrible word and then apologize he's not actually sorry he's just a horrible person but yes so she was my good luck charm I guess and then has she did you ever get to see the show that little girl uh, not yet so oh, she hopefully will be back. so we cast Maggie off Broadway and um, by the way where are you from Megs? Connecticut why do I always see you from the south um, my mom's from the South, so I've always said y'all. Oh. And oh. she's here today. Oh, cute. My family. Oh, where is she from? Uh, South Georgia. And your dad is a pastor? He is. Retired. He's retired a retired pastor. pastor, and the nun in our show is his favorite character. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> oh, yeah, tell everybody what happened at lunch. <laughs> so, it's funny because, um... He loves the nun so much that he'll quote some of her uh, lines from Disaster, like, how's it going? Or, you're going to hell. And I have to remind him that out of context, he can't really say that because they don't know he's quoting a musical. And well, he's really a pastor walking by pointing to someone and saying, you're going to hell. <laughs> he's damning someone, not cool. Okay, so then, Mags, you did the show off the Broadway, yeah. and then uh, our leading lady left, and then you took over the role. Yeah. So what was that like, making a little lead debut off Broadway? It was incredible. The part is, it's it's amazing. So it was so much fun. Yeah. And um, I, I do remember not knowing that I was in, tr in charge of um, one of the cutoffs after I Am Woman. And so one oh. night... <laughs> So the first night I went on, I held it out, waiting to be cut off. Oh my Did you God. know this? No. So I was holding it for oh Jesus, God, and meanwhile, meanwhile, the child that is singing along with me keeps looking up at me like, what are you doing? Please, God, cut us off. The, next, the next day, Larry, our music um, person, he came up to me and goes, Maggie, did you know that you're the one that does the cutoff, and we follow you? And I go, no, thank goodness. Yeah, that's why I'm in an oxygen tank. Yeah, so that's my memory of doing that 
that role off Broadway. <laughs> was almost passing out. And yep. then you, when, when, our, when our show closed off Broadway, I know you went on a national tour, uh, Kinky Boots. Yeah. Now, what was your part in that? So, I was a swing. Um, so Describe I, what that is to um, non <laughs> So, for those of y'all that don't know, a swing um, covers, is off stage and covers, uh, I covered seven roles, including the two principals, uh, Lauren and Nicola. And um, so I learned lots of parts and went on at a mo in a moment's notice. And well, how do you uh, learn lots of parts? I mean, how do you not... Do you, you learn them all at the same time, or you have to do one at a time? I tried to do it one, one at a time. Um, so I learned one part, and then that was like kind of the way to learn the world of the show and learn all the music and learn how the set works. And then each part was a little bit easier. And how do you keep notes on that kind of stuff? I would just take like really detailed notes and have like a little uh, book that I would keep with me. And do you have because in our show, Paul Castro is a separate script for each person. He's covering. Yeah, is that what you did? I, yeah, like every every swing has like different um, techniques for doing it. But I would just have um, just like a little Bible almost and keep it with me backstage. And but let's you go in for one. Like, are they all separated the notes? So like you look for the one person. Yes, yeah, so I would have every track like separated so that I could oh. just look at it, you know, as I went. Um, but it was amazing to do it because I feel like I can do anything now. <laughs> right, so were, you, were you one of those lazy asses that would go on and be like, I'm not singing the harmony, I'm singing the same part I sing every single time and I don't care? No, because it, it was, you know, we only had like a few people on each part, so you kind of had to make sure. You learn all the harmony, all the dance, mm -hmm. all the, and the two principal parts. Yeah. What was but the scariest it, thing that ever happened? Um, so there are a lot of treadmills in our oh, in Kinky, Kinky Boots. Boots yeah. Treadmills. Yeah, yeah and that. um, Lauren uh, sings a song called "History of Wrong Guys," where these shoes are coming down the conveyor belt, and she's loading them into shoe boxes while she does the song. So it's all very choreographed. And I remember one time. The shoes were coming down the conveyor belt, and all of a sudden they stopped because the last treadmill wasn't on. And so this shoe was just flopping around like a dead fish <laughs> on the treadmill. And I was like, oh my goodness, how do I get it to start? And then I remembered how to turn on the treadmill, and so it came at me. And But meanwhile, I'm singing and doing choreography and trying to remember the lyrics, and the shoe is so just... I love Lucy S. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and it was, it was super fun. It made it more exciting. And then when you auditioned for Disaster, you... You were you have like how did you how were you able to come to New York and audition for disaster while you were doing Kiki Boots? Um, I was able to um Did you get a sick day? Oh, we don't want to talk about it. So you were really sick that day, <laughs> but you weirdly went to New York at the same time. Okay, <laughs> it's all good. People understand that. Yay, Broadway! <laughs> Broadway. And then did you get no you didn't get a call, but you had just one audition, right? I did, yes. You coaching so. for one day. Yeah. And then you gave your notice. Was everyone in the cast like, yay? Or were they like, yeah. People were really, really excited. They were so supportive. And, um, you know, it's just such a privilege to be back in New York and be home. And um, But I loved my time on the tour. So I, I, I miss them all very much. Oh, you're Kinky Boots people. And what's it like finally being on Broadway? You know, because I was, like, when I'm finally doing a show, I'm like, this is kind of the same thing as doing a high school show. Like, it doesn't necessarily feel different in a certain way when you're on Broadway. So what is different and what's the same? Um... Gosh, that, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, it says the money. Yes. I mean, there's nothing better than, than doing what you love and getting to go home at night, you know, especially when you're used to touring or doing mm. shows um, at different regional theaters. It's just, there's nothing better than getting to go home. I get to see my husband and... Um, which is great, but I don't know if it's hit me yet that we're doing this on Broadway. I know. Um, I know what you mean, because it feels like we're kind of almost still in rehearsal because mm -hmm. we're in previews. Yeah. So it's like just focusing on getting the show done. Yeah, I had a moment the first day that we moved into the theater. Um, the the color scheme of our set is very similar to the color scheme that we had at St. Luke's. And so I remember moving into the theater that day, and we were everyone was in the orchestra, and everyone was milling around and doing the meet and greet. And I looked up at the stage, and I saw the colors that used to be on our stage, and I just burst into tears because I was like, they seeing it on the big scale and seeing the lights that were, it was just, it was magical. Oh, it was, the off Broadway I'm, version versus the Broadway. That's what's so funny. It makes me because people are like, yeah, I don't know how that's going to translate to Broadway. I'm like, okay, here's the deal. We wrote a Broadway show and we shoved it into an off-Broadway theater. I wrote a show that takes place in a floating discotheque casino with earthquakes and tidal waves. How is that a small show? Like, I don't understand. Like, I don't know how it's going to look big. I'm like, because it's an earthquake and a tidal wave and it's a giant casino. We just somehow made it work off-Broadway. That was the skill. Yeah. Now it's like, it totally makes sense. It's like, of course it's a big show. I don't understand people like, I don't know how you can think that small, tiny show. Totally. I've had a lot of people, <laughs> I've had a lot of people that um, saw it off-Broadway come this first week in previews and everyone was just raving and 
the comparison, they were like, it's all there. All the, 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 the off Broadway there from off Broadway. All the off Broadway charm is still there with everything that we've got going mm -hmm. on. Like it's, it just is on a bigger scale, and it just is even more exciting. Yeah, people. Everyone said to us like, please keep that mom and pop slash little rascals quality that you had off Broadway. Which we do, but for, I, that was the kind of this. That was kind of the challenge was how to keep it really kind of, you know, all this kind of theater magic instead of having like a giant, you know, mechanized blah blah blah. I had to have theater magic to make people go, oh my god, like I'm watching something magical, and yet have it on a Broadway stage. And I think we, mm -hmm. think we kept it. Thank God. Um, all right, so oh. Mags, you want to do your audition song? Sure. She actually has, still has it folded up. Is that your original copy? Um, this is the yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Okay. And woman, watch me grow. See me standing toe to 